Hello YouTube! <laughs> Welcome back to the Every Closet. My name is Stephanie and along with my partner Ethan, we are two full-time resellers of used clothing places like Poshmark and eBay. And today we are continuing the Bolo alphabet and finally, I think we're six videos in, we are finishing off the A Bolos today. So next video will be B's and so on and so forth from there ad infinitum until I collapse from exhaustion. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, what the bolo alphabet is, please, Ethan, if you could link that intro video up here, TLDR, it's supposed to be super useful, condensed, condensed information about all the bolo brands that I know, bolo meaning things you should be on the lookout for when you're sourcing for reselling to pick up and that you can flip for a profit under certain circumstances. I also just wanted to mention, did I mention recently how much I love our background? This is our like kind of completed background. I'm not 100% sure that this is our completed lighting setup, that everything's at exactly the angle we want it at, but it's looking pretty good on the viewfinder to me. And I adore this little sign, do the thing. It's my favorite thing that we've ever owned, ish, probably. So let me know in the comments below if you like it. And also, if you if you guys love this series, if you're getting value from it, if it's helping you in any way, shape, or form, and you want us to continue doing it, first of all, I'm going to continue either way. But please, please, if you could share this with your reseller friends, with your social media, with anyone at all, we would be so grateful because um, this took a lot of work. And so we want, we want at least maybe 20 people to see it. Okay, but without further ado, let's Finish off the bolo list for the alphabet letter A. The next brand is Atelier Camille. And let's be super brief here. This is a brand known for being carried at Anthropology. Not all pieces are, and they do have their own website. And say here, they're based on French made women's clothing. Comps kind of suck. So I just want you to know that this is one of those brands that has been carried at Anthropology, so you can recognize the name though definitely one of the lower tier anthropology brands and comps range between 10 and 40 dollars max personally i'd only be grabbing this at the goodwill bins aka the goodwill outlet for one to two dollars max but hey now we recognize it we know like a bit of context and let's be real wouldn't you stop to google any brand that starts with the word atelier anyway exactly speaking of which our next brand is atelier delphine much better designer yuka Ud is it so? Sorry. Created Atelier Delphine in March of 2011 in order to fill, fill the void she said she noticed in her own wardrobe for feminine modern loungewear. It is a Los Angeles based brand. They have a ton of oversized, almost baggy dresses and pants, shirts and cardigans. Their current line has a lot of alpaca jackets for the fall. The retail prices range between $250 to $650 for most pieces. And the resale value should be a minimum of $75 from what I'm seeing and up to around $200 with some certain pieces like jackets or dresses going for up to a maximum of maybe 300 resale. Solid, solid bolo. They make purses and accessories as well. And sometimes their logo will just say Delphine instead of the whole Atelier Delphine. So look out for that either way. And I'd pick this up basically anywhere charging me under 20 to 30 dollars for it or maybe a bit more if they're like a sherpa jacket alpaca you know next is athleta okay i think everyone has heard of athleta although as a vancouverite i actually had not heard of athleta when i started reselling because all anyone wants here is a bunch of lululemon so essentially or evidently it is owned by the gap which i find somehow disappointing but i digress they were founded in california in 1998 so just on the cusp of that vintage by our random 2000 definition although i wouldn't honestly be tagging any athleta pieces as vintage and with athleta the more recent the pieces are, the better they do. They tend to hold more value for resale. They make women's and also girls' active wear mainly, although they also make a ton of like regular clothes, loungewear clothes, like sweaters, dresses, swimwear, other non-workouty clothes. Um, their retail prices are pretty much right around similar to that of Lululemon's. They're considered like direct competitors, but the resale value is slightly lower for Athleta. It's very all over the place. I would say try looking up comps for your exact piece that you found because most of their leggings have their style name right in the back of the label, so that's super helpful. It's pretty easy to find styles for this, so 
The highest comps are for jackets and as always new with tags items but I would say they resale just a bit lower than Lululemon does. Next is ATM by Anthony Thomas Malelo. This brand was launched in 2012 and like many brands on this list claims to have perfected the basic t-shirt. It makes women's, men's, kids, sportswear and basic pieces that perfect t-shirt by the way that will set you back $80 for adults for yellows for kids and then everything else that they make is more pricey than that up to around $250 for hoodies and actually $500 for the merino wool cardigan. The retail prices go up maybe 10% when it's carried to other retailers so like Nordstrom or Netta Porter instead of off of their own website. The value retention in terms of resale comps is not that great in my opinion. Lower to mid tier bolo comps ranging around $15 for their basic t-shirts to $100 max for used items and those again are like jackets, cashmere sweaters, silk dresses, etc. I would not recommend paying up for this brand but I do recommend recognizing it for whenever your cost of goods is low enough to make that profitable. Next is Etoire which is an Australian based fashion label established in 2018 by multidisciplinary creative director Cynthia Fark. Kioni, sorry. Uh, Atuara is sold globally at over 50 acclaimed retailers, including Revolve, Forward, Shop Bop, David Jones, and Harvey Nichols. I think Harvey Nichols is London. They make women's and some kids' clothing, mostly dresses, blazers, trousers, blouses, you know, vent formally wear. Um, they also have an on and off loungewear line that they sometimes carry. Retail is usually between two and five hundred dollars. Resale is pretty good. Most pieces should get you a minimum of forty bucks resale. And I did see as high as three hundred for a used maxi dress, and then tons in between. The lowest comps all seem to be for like their bras, body suits, or lingerie pieces in general. Otherwise, I would pick this up at the thrift, at the bins, or even at a consignment store, charging me under twenty dollars, maybe under thirty dollars if it was new with tags or a maxi dress. I must say, most of the higher comps are when someone titled the dress only worn once and then shows them wearing it to a wedding themselves. That's like all the highest price comps, most of the over 200 ones for some reason. So maybe use that format if you find one of these dresses, get your partner to dress up, fake a wedding photo, only worn once. Just my advice. Next is ATP Atelier. ATP stands for All Tomorrow's Parties, which I find slightly amusing. It was founded in Italy in 2011 by two friends. They make shoes, bags, and other accessories, usually out of leather. They're all about their materials, which is mostly vegetable tanned vachetta leather. Leather? Vegetable tanned vachetta leather, which is apparently sustainable, like it's biodegradable and non-toxic and other sustainable things. Uh, they are known for their sandals but those aren't the highest comps. Boots and purses are the higher comp but the sandals are more ubiquitous. They're carried exactly where you think I'm about to say they're carried. Farfetch, Revolve, Netta Porter, etc. The retail is usually $200 to $900 with a range in there and comps indicate that a good condition pair of sandals should sell for a minimum of $50 and up to $100 and then more for the boots and even more for their purses. So I'd pick this up depending on the profit margin. Next is Atake with a Q. Well, 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 this brand is one of the exceedingly few on this list with a current 100% sell through rate on Poshmark US. So when you look up comps on Posh US, you have to change the formatting looking up this brand from available to sold to even see any listings. That is not the case on eBay, but the sell through rate over there is very good too. Um, and the sold prices are higher over on eBay. So anyway, it's an Italian cycling brand. They sell cycling shorts, bib shorts, shirts, jerseys, like zip up jersey, all cycling gear for wearing while you cycle. All these clothing pieces retail between $200 to maybe $450 US and the comps range from as low as $20 to up to $200 for a full set. Yes there are lower comps but I don't think even for one of their short sleeve shirts you should need to dip below like $40 and they can range maybe $40 to $70 for shirts and more for shorts and then there's some limited edition or cool print things that people are looking for as well. So it's a very solid bolo. Make sure you keep an eye out for it and oh, apparently it might sell pretty quick. Next is Attico. Attico is a luxury Italian brand launched in 2016. That's so recent by Giorgia Tordini 
and Gilda Ambrosio. The prices range wildly. Their current collection has at the cheapest end some sunglasses for $250 US and some dresses for over $4,000 and a bunch of stuff in between there. So comps are solid for this brand. They look a little higher on Poshmark than they do on eBay, but they're all pretty great. You truly, and this is actually not a suggestion, this is an order. You will not have to accept below $100 for any authentic Attico piece. Swear it to me right now, unless it's a pair of jeans, which don't do great, or a small little accessory, I shan't sell perfectly good Attico below $100 resale, amen. Comps range from $100 to $900, and everywhere in between, I'd pay a lot for authentic Attico pieces. Man, I don't know what my ceiling is until I'm at the cash register and I'm giving them my card. Oh, and they're also known for these triangle heeled slide on mule sandals, just like this one, just bolo it. Tippy, tippy chop to your bolo right here. And I don't want to see you undervalue it. I will freak out. Next is Audemars Pig Pigeway. <sighs> okay. Most of the time I'm fine pronouncing things wrong, but I like literally don't even know how to begin with this one. It's like Audemars Piguet, Pigway, who, Pigway? I don't know. We're just going to skip past it though, because we don't. I'm just here to give you the info. I'll show you the tag. I'm sorry I'm pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> Moving on. Audemars Piguet. And we are going to go over this briefly because it is mainly a watch brand. And we are not comprehensively covering jewelry, watch, etc. brands. But this is a Switch watch company, which was founded in 19... No, not 19. 1895. They do also make, for some reason, branded polo t-shirts and baseball hats, which can resell for between $30 and $100. The watches, though. I just need you to know about them. On their website, they don't even have the prices. They all say prices on request. <laughs> I do not know what they retail for, but that barely matters because comps on eBay, and for the love of God, do me a favor, don't sell these on Poshmark. Comps over there are absolutely undervalued. They kind of suck eBay comps range for a real good condition ranch from around $3,000 resale to $100,000 resale. Yes, used. Yes, every price in between there too. Tons of sold comps. But the highest comp on Posh US right now is $11,000. Then after that, it's mostly under a thousand. And like, seriously, do not sell one of these watches for under a thousand dollars. Heck, I am currently advising you, if you find an authentic one and you know it is, to source one of these watches if it's legit and you find it for as little as a thousand dollars. In fact, I see eBay comps for a single watch link. No watch itself, just a little link for one to four hundred dollars. So, given all that, I did want to briefly mention it because wow. That's a lot of money. That's that's an annual salary kind of money. But obviously with numbers like that, there are a ton of fakes. So don't just go onto Poshmark right now and source all of the cheapest ones. Very likely most of those are fake, but if you can get it authenticated and it's legit, you can sell this for too much money for me to even contemplate. So I needed to mention it. I just need to mention it. Next is August. The label August with an E on the end, on the end of just the word August. And it has been sold at Revolve in the past, although it isn't being carried there currently. And is only being sold from its own website as far as I can find it at this moment. And I would say it's maybe slowly going out of style. This brand used to have higher resale value, but it is dipping. I believe their retail prices may have also taken a hit. I know about this brand only because we actually sourced a super cute dress. Ethan, you want to pop that up? For $15 from Plato's Closet way back a long time ago, and we sold it for $100 on our Canadian closet. Again, way back a long time ago. So I like this brand and I love that dress, but you should know not to pay up for it today uh, too much because all the most recent comps on US especially, but also in Canada, are between $35 and $100 max with some outliers, averaging out around maybe $50. Still lots of room for profit in there, but be picky about the style and likely only pick up their dresses, especially maxi dresses, and don't pay up for anything with this label thinking they're all easy $100 flips because that's just sadly not the case with this brand anymore. Next is Ogden. It's a hand knit yarn, you know, knitwear face brand focused brand. They make a lot of sweaters, scarves, blanket, and more sweaters. You may know them as being previously carried in anthropology, which is correct. They were. Those pieces are by far their least valuable resale wise. Their own websites knit, sell, and resell for much higher, and especially the present day ones, than any of those old anthro pieces do, which usually sell between 15 and 40. 40 resale max. Current pieces off their site can go between $50 and $100 resale. 
And then on the highest tier, they have a recent line of sweaters in collab with the brand Smythe, big, big bolo brand. And those pieces can go anywhere from 50 to like 160 resold. So look out for the different tags, make sure which piece you have, you look it up and how old it is, the newer the better. And if you hear the word Smythe, probably just pick it up. Next is Auteur. This is another Australian brand of manly dresses by a designer, Lucinda Taft. They do make separates, but I don't see those super represented in the sold comps on eBay or Poshmark. So dresses mainly, and the retail is between $250 to $750 for most of their pieces. The thing is, this brand launched in 2020, so it is super new, meaning very, very few comps on Poshmark, even fewer of them on eBay, and we don't have a ton of info right now. A lot of the sales so far are also new with tags, which makes sense because no one could have owned one of these pieces for very long and had time to resell it. But regardless, comps so far range $40 to $150 for used pieces with some higher, um, but the higher ones mostly are new with tags. And I just want you to keep an eye out for this one. It is carried at Forward, which is Revolve's like high, it's like fancy Revolve. These brands are too nice to be carried on Revolve is what they they seem to think that is, but they're the same company, I think. I hope I'm not screwing that up. But basically, you know, if something's carried at Forward instead of at Revolve, then they think it's quite high end is the vibe I get from their websites. Oh, and they also have a cosmetics line but that isn't part of this series. So let's move on from there. But yeah, I think this is going to be a good resale value brand. It's got high retail and it seems quite popular. Next is Autumn Adegbo. This brand is named after their black female designer and owner who incorporated her company in 2016. The brand's aesthetic is said to be more is more and for women who want to stand out in the crowd. They're known for dresses as well as shoes, bags, knitwear, separates, and also headbands is another major thing from them, and scrunchies, both of which have been carried at Anthropology for a while, the headbands and scrunchies. The resale value is high, somewhere between three to $800 for most pieces, and even the headbands retail for $132. Pumps for the dresses are between 80 and 300 resale, and even the scrunchies have like a $30 comp, etc. $40 minimum for the headbands. I actually see absolutely none of the shoes or bags on the resale market in the comp. I guess maybe they're too new of a part of the brand to have cycled through into resale yet, but I'd be on the lookout for all of it. If you could sell a headband for 40 bucks, reuse, you could sell a dress for a good amount. Next is Auxiliary this is the name of a sub brand carried in Aritzia and they do entirely accessories. So they mainly do hats, bags, gloves, and belts. Their non-purse pieces retail in the $35 to $60 range and resell for $15 to $40. The purses and backpacks or fanny packs retail between $150 and $400 and can resell in the ranges of $30 to $150 depending. Sometimes the bags will just say AUX, AUX on the front, but usually their tag is spelled out auxiliary on the interior tag. Don't pay up too much for these pieces, but the bags especially can hold some very good resale value in them and they are carried at Aritzia so be on the lookout for them or Bolo if you will. Next is Avec Les Fee. This is a brand very highly associated with anthropology. It has often been carried there. Um, although it is technically its own brand though, they they have their own website. They are known for their outerwear and jackets and were founded in LA, but they say they were inspired by Parisian chic style, hence the French-ish name. Um, it launched in 2017, which really surprised me when I figured it was earlier than that because it, it feels like a lot of their pieces with anthro are a bit older older, but that seems to just have been an incorrect assumption I had. Their pieces actually only retail between $100 and $250, which seems slightly low to me just for how substantial their pieces are. Like their current line's shearling trench coat is only $215. $250. And that sounds like a good deal to my broken reseller high fashion soaked brain right now. Comps are silly. The best ones are jackets, but in general for this brand, it's anywhere from $6 to $200. It is silly. So I would highly recommend searching the piece that you have in front of you. The higher pieces will be things like leather jackets, trench coat. There's this star printed jacket. All of these things are selling quite high right now, but probably also marked up at your thrift store. So definitely look it up, see sold comps and adjust. Aviator Nation. Aviator Nation is an American clothing brand founded by 
Paige Mikoski in 2006. Classic reseller bolo. The line consists of apparel for men, women, children, and their garments designed to have a worn in and like vintage feel. This brand has amazing value retention. Their main pieces are their sweatshirts or hoodies and joggers with some jackets, tracker hats, and other items thrown in there like bikinis. Uh, their logo is an AN with some rainbow stripes. They use a lot of smiley faces, a lot of lightning bolts, and a lot of sunsets. Their items usually retail between $150 and $650 depending on fabric and things like that are very all over the place. It's nearly ridiculous. I'd say you can expect to get at least $40 for any clothing piece by Aviator Nation. And a lot of pieces can and do resell over $100, which is obviously a ton of value retention. Even a few like rare or vintage pieces that can sell for up to $1,000. Things that have been discontinued or whatever. And of course, they also make some puffer jackets, which will also sell quite high. I'll tell you right now, whenever I find this, I will be pricing it for over $100 and seeing what happens, unless it is even more rare, and then I will be pricing it higher. Next is Avila by DN. So, we are going back into obscurity again with this brand, and I can't find a ton on them. But what I did find is it's based in Canada. It's been carried at Revolve. The owner's name is Don, and it is at least fairly recent, maybe 2016 or later. They also have a collab with Cami Cameron, and are best known for their tiny crop tops, usually rocked by Bella Hadid or other models like that. The retail for the crop tops are $90 to $130, and the resale is between $30 to $60, depending more for newer tags, but the sell through rate is particularly impressive for this brand. I think pick it up and give it a shot. I mean, especially a silk crop top, that's like most of the comps. And if they're thrifted, they'll be very lightweight. So at the bins, very cheap and likely not that marked up at the thrift either. I hope, maybe. Next is awake mode. And yes, there's a period in between every letter of awake there. You need the periods between when you're putting this brand into Poshmark. Anyway, apparently that is an acronym for All Wonderful Adventures Kindle Enthusiasm. And to be perfectly honest, that sounds super forced to me, but um, that is not a buy business. Anyway, it is a luxury brand based in London and it launched in 2012. Its style is fairly avant-garde, making women's clothing, shoes, and purses. Their pieces retail around three to eight hundred dollars mostly, and the resale is fairly uncommon. Like, there aren't many comps. But the few listings that there are have sold between $75 and $900. And I know there aren't many comps, but I wouldn't be accepting below $100 for one of their pieces myself, unless it's like a plain tank top or little bandeau or something. But it does seem like this brand is a good one to watch out for in the future. Next is Axel Arigato. This is a Swedish brand that was founded in 2014 and they're known for their shoes in particular their sneakers mostly. This is another brand, unfortunately, that handles the resale of their own authentic goods through their own website, a very hip and concerning trend that I'm seeing more and more brands do. Their shoes are most of the comps and they retail between $150 and $400 approximately. Resale for the shoes on the platforms we sell on anyway is between $35 and $150. The newer the condition, the more you can sell them for. I'd pick these up at most places, but they really should be in excellent condition to be worth it to flip, but they resell for a bit more on their own website, so maybe we're screwed. Next is I Am Muse. It was designed in the heart of Los Angeles. I Am Muse is derived from the Japanese word meaning beautiful and the Greek word for inspiration. But if you ask me, that is bullshit because it sounds nice and all, but come on, it's a pun. I Am Muse. I Am Muse. It's a pun. Lean into the pun. Founder Tina Rod Rodio launched it in 2018, uh, makes women's clothing pieces. I amuse pieces retail between $200 to $1,000. Resale is super varied. Some people are letting items go for like $15 to $30, which I know you know for a fact that you don't have to do because another person sold a plain white crop top pre-owned for $125 US dollars. So say it with me, you do not need to dip below $100 for the resale of items from this brand yet. Yeah, hopefully that won't change soon. They max out around $350 for resold items, the highest comps being their rompers and their jumpsuits. But yeah, solid bolo. Next is AYR, which stands for all year round, which I like. It's supposed to be the antithesis of fast fashion. They make women's wardrobe essentials. Through their website right now, it says that the men's line is coming soon. Funnily enough, AYR was launched in 2014. It was supposed to be the women's line from the larger brand Bonobos. So now it is 
its own like separate thing. They're not related anymore. The pieces retail between $100 and $600 max for like their robe style trench jacket. The comps for this brand are pretty solid. They should minimum get you $40 for most pieces and around up to $200 for the highest value pieces. And those again are things like their jeans, their sweaters, their jacket, and of course, that trench coat that's like a robe style, which can sell for as high as $400 reused. So huge value retention on this brand. I'd be on the lookout for that, my friends, which is what this video is about. And lastly, we have Aztec Mountain. I'm so excited, we're almost done it. This is an Aspen, which by the way, is a Colorado US-based ski resort. If you didn't know, uh, Aspen-based ski brand. It was founded in 2013 and has since become what they're calling the if you know, you know, brand for luxury meets technical ski gear. Meaning it has a bit of like a cult following, a loyal but quiet set of buyers. They sell everything ski related from buffs to base layers for around $150 to down puffer jackets for $1,600. They are best known for their puffer jackets and other jackets, bib overalls, ski pants, and also a very pricey line of cashmere sweaters. Both women's and men's, there isn't a ton of it listed on either Poshmark or eBay, so there's not a ton of comps to go off, but it seems to be fairly undervalued on the resale market so far. The highest comp right now is a Nuitegs puffer jacket that sold on eBay for $900, but a lot of the other Nuitegs jackets are selling for under $400, which is not great considering they retailed at around $1,400 or more. The range for pieces is $40 to $300 for used pieces, but again, the comps are so sparse, I can't guarantee either end of that spectrum, but look out for that label anyway, and know that if you do find it, someone else paid a freaking ton of money for that, so you may as well look up recent comps, and if your cost of goods are low enough, I would take it and I'd put it up there and I'd be like, someone pay me what this is worth. And we'll see how that goes. And that's pretty much how reselling works, actually. <laughs> so we're done, hey! Oh my gosh, I think that was like 169 brands, maybe 170, maybe 168. I get lost, I'm not sure. But we are done with A, so the next Bolo Alphabet video is going to be B. Finally, the second letter of the alphabet. Whew, A was the longest, A was the longest. Most letters aren't 170 brands long, but A was because, no, I don't want, I'm not a linguist, I don't know why. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I hope you enjoyed the A's. Let me know down in the comments as you officially can let me know any A brands that I missed. It would so, so help me out. It would so help everyone else out in the comments. So if you could do that, that would make me so, so happy. And you know, like, comment, subscribe if you want to. That would be amazing. And we will see you guys in the next video, be it Bolo Alphabet or something else.